Good evening, everybody. It's February 28th, and we're here for the first um, Newberry um, Building Project Selection Committee. The selection committee is just that. We're in the next phase of the designing and building of our facilities in terms of the police station and town hall. And so as part of what the town needs to do is you need to select uh, an owner's project manager, an OPM, and then you need to select a design team, architect, uh, engineers, uh, in which to do the work. And once we have those in place, there's a design phase. It could be six months to a year of design. And then we're into um, construction. So this committee here is for the selection of the OPM and the designer. Once we select those people and we've gone through one phase, second phase, and once the designer starts, I think it would be good to have a different committee that's going to follow the design process and the construction process all the way through. But the importance of this committee is that we, as a team, are the people that are going to select the professionals who can hope let the professionals do their work. So it's important. This is the, the, the buy-in and the accountability for the rest of the town to understand that we're selecting people to do work for the town. So I have a sign-in sheet and everyone's signed in and emails. Martha's taking copious notes as she always does. Um, so what's task one? Organize. Oh, introduce ourselves? Oh. Organize? Yeah. Why don't we introduce ourselves? Jay, I call people to select them. Damon Jesperson, in Board of Selectmen. Order of point in importance. Uh, <laughs> um, Martha Taylor, town planner, also a registered architect and AIA member. Uh, Eric Swan, uh, town resident, registered architect. Mike Riley, police chief. Tracy Blaze, town administrator. Otto Kinsel, retired law enforcement. John Keller, resident, owner's project manager of the profession. John Lucy, Deputy Chief, please. Okay, step two is organize. What do you got? Nominating position source. I'll nominate Eric Svan as chair. Second. All those in favor? Discussion. <laughs> Discussion. Seems like he fits under that as well. <laughs> I nominate uh, Martha as secretary. <laughs> Second. <laughs> I nominate John Lucy as secretary. You really want that? <laughs> <laughs> I had to ask for a pen and paper. <laughs> Since we have a lot to do, we also nominate a second chair or a co or co chair, however you want to call it. Just I think we should finish that nomination first, yeah. actually. Okay. Take a vote on it. So, should we take a vote? All, All those in favor of Eric Stone as chair? Aye. 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 Thank you. Appreciate the honor. Thank you as we go through this. Um, and I guess the first thing I have to say is that this committee, if anybody's here, I guess I'm talking to you two guys, <laughs> um, is here for, like, I guess the political watchdog that's, that's not the committee that we're on. We all, we all have a lot of heavy lifting to do, and everybody here needs to read and review everything that we're doing. We we're, we're have a very, well, we have guidelines from the state and laws from the state that we need to follow in order to do what we need to do and we need to be on top of it and up front of it um, and open about it so that we can move through this once we start engaging and putting out advertising and we go through the selection process um, there are no more um, backdoor discussions or even contacting people it all has to be up front um, I'm sure John you could add to Add to that center, mm -hmm. yeah. especially on the public side. Especially on the public side, every email is a public document. So, in honor of uh, and thanking you for all for making me chair, I brought you all the present. Text <laughs> <laughs> me later. Basically, this um, 
the legal requirements and practices uh, for designing and constructing public facilities. And if we take a look at the table of contents, um, there's forward, there's public construction in Massachusetts, which is part one. Chapter two is design selection process, which is what we are all about. Um, planning stages and the design stages. <coughs> After that, section five is the procurement of um, building construction, which will not be the task of this committee, but I think you need to preview and, and purview and at least understand the entire book because you're selecting people that are gonna be engaged in this entire workflow. So, um, write your name on it, bring it to the meeting, and please do read it. Um, we're gonna have to follow the steps. Do you have enough for you that we can give the other select? Yes. yes. And the other, the other document, which kind of comes into play, but not really, is this is Chapter 149, 149A, uh, Massachusetts General Law. This is Chapter 30B. These are procurement of supplies, this procurement of construction. The first term we need to get over is um, there's construction of what we call flat work, which is like roadways. That's not what we're into. We're into building construction. So they, and then I guess the next step once we understand that is that, uh, and I have a bunch of documents that I'll quickly show people, but there are some simple charts that basically is described under chapter 149, the steps of design, the design phases, and what is a bold requirement and what is a suggested task. So, in simple form, we are going to create the document, which was drafted last January and then stored. It's about 37 pages or something of such. And this basically is our advertisement. And this is the outline of what project we're asking somebody to do. And then it has the steps of what, um, how we're going to make that selection process. So this document is made for the OPM selection. Uh, everyone needs to get a copy of this. Everyone needs to read through it and understand it. But basically, we will put an ad in the paper. John, if I'm shortchanging anything, please speak up. <laughs> okay. um, we will get people will come to town hall and say I'm interested in. And um, there'll probably be a little bit more backup that they can have that's not actually published in the paper, but they can come and get some plans or some programs, they will put together their best qualifications. And what this is, is this the state decided, instead of getting bids and having everyone focus on the dollar amount in terms of selecting somebody for the best interest of the public, they want you to make a qualification selection decision. And so people will send us their portfolios and their letter of interest and, they'll, um, and their resumes, and we will assess those. We will assess those for the criteria that we have in this document. We will each have a score sheet and we will up front in the open, but in our committee way, rank them, come up with a list, and then we'll decide how many we will interview. And then we'll have a public interview. Uh, and we then, again, will have a ranked uh, scorecard on criteria that's, again, published in here that says how we will rank them once that we interview. And we will select somebody on qualifications based then we will negotiate with them. If we can't come to terms with their feet, we'll go to number two. Um, I think, and, and then once we do that, and we have an OPM on board, then we will go through, okay, what is the program? Um, you know, what's the spaces for the police station? What, how many employees does the police station have? What are the spaces that we actually have to have? What are some of the spaces that we might be able to economize on? Are there any bluff spaces that could be on the fringe, and we'll go through that process with the OPM. Um, we'll do the same thing for the town hall, and then um, we will, with the OPM's support, put together the same document for the designer selection. We'll go through the exact same thing to select the designer, and we will select an architect with qualifications based. Um, I guess from my experience as an architect and doing projects and a lot bigger projects, 
I think that when you find and you select people that are on the same team, that have the same goals and the same, want to get to the finish line together, you'll get the best project. If you think that we're going to find somebody that thinks they're going to come in and they're going to shortchange something or they're going to make somebody else do their work, we're going to end up with a, a battle and go around and around and we're not going to get what we want. Um, truthfully, the project's been compromised a bit with the budget but we're going to do the best we can with it. And I think until we actually hire the OPM, until we actually hire the designers, until the designers actually draft up a plan that we all can look at and point to and understand, um, some of the heavy decisions on budget and what that budget is and what's in, what's out, what we can do can't be made. We, we've done enough. And I, you know, I've got a pile like this of reports. I've got every option under the sun, and it's budgeted every way to Sunday, but all that doesn't matter. We have a number, and we need to hire the right people. So, uh, I guess, John, it would be good to hear about a little bit about OPM and your experience, but we'd like to find somebody that is the right somebody, and I, I guess I'm trying to size up with some of the OPMs that I know that I've worked with. Um, the interest, um, the value or the excitement to the type of project that we have. This isn't a project for everybody, and so we will probably hopefully get a fair amount of interest in the project, and then we have to vent through the fringes on either side and find the, the right person in the middle. Yeah, I, I'd like to offer, and uh, I've gotten a little wiser because I'm just finishing up the police station in Salisbury as the project manager for the contractor. So I have a lot of things I can say, <clears throat> but I'll certainly I'll probably share it in a way that would support our being su successful. The biggest thing I find, and uh, as an OPM, um, is that we get people on that team that truly are qualified, and a, a true interest in a job this size, because like I said, big jobs, they don't want people being just thrown on the job because they're a body. I've seen jobs, and not just in salary, but other projects being done publicly. Uh, between architect and OPM, and then that not qualified. Something like that. So I think we've got three people here that understand this process really well. <clears throat> and I'm on this committee because I don't want to have that go down the wrong, wrong path. And I had the experience like these two people do with what works and what doesn't work on a construction project. So uh, it's not a big project, so it's not made for everybody. There's a lot of small contractors that are going to bid on this, and there'll be probably some big ones. There'll be some not boutiques and there'll be some much larger firms of, you know, like SGA, I call it boutique, but where you came from is probably a little bit. Um, and uh, well, it doesn't matter, we want to meet the team. As an OPM, when I'm interviewing for a client, uh, the contractor, uh, we want to meet the key people we're going to deal with almost all the time. And that's what we got to get along with. And hopefully the team behind them can support them. Right, uh, if someone shows up with a bunch of suits and uh, yeah. it's not the guy with the work boots, it's going to actually Marshal the guys in the morning, that's not yeah. the team that we want. And that's how they usually win the job on a negotiated job, but we're negotiating these first two parts of the project. So uh, I have a strong vested interest in uh, helping that be successful. Anybody else got any more? Um, <clears throat> contract is that, I don't know if I'm getting the out ahead of the horse, contract is that do these types of projects. They come with some type of rating. Is that? Mm -hmm. There is a DCAM rating. To get from their work. Okay, so that's operations that have been in this line of work and done a, quite a few of these projects. Mm -hmm. Most of them will find them to be rated. Every every, every public job they get rated on. Like right. Stanley will get rated on this police station, just like they got on the library, just like they did in the senior center and CTA did in the Is school. Five million or ten million, but there's a certain threshold where you can okay. actually pre qualify some of the bidders. Mm -hmm. It may be ten million. But there's a way to, to sort of just weed out everybody and have some people and, and have a thought about who's going to do it. There's also, when we hire the OPM, the thought of whether it's a, um, a, file, a straight file sub bid or whether it's a CM at risk. And if we, it's a CM at risk, then we're going to bring the CM in earlier. There is in the back, on page 135, you'll see it says um, design build. There is also a modular section. We're not going to modular. There's no discussion of modular. This buildings aren't cut out for modular, period. Um, the design build could be good, but it's better for like flat work or if you want a DPW barn. You get the spec, you know exactly what it is, and you say, here, go build it and give me the price and just go do it. 
we don't have that. We're, we're going to want to be involved. And if we do the design build process or someone brings that up, then once we hire that team, it's up to the designer is no longer under uh, under our contract. It's, it's under the, the contractor's contract. So we lose a little bit of um, negotiating and understanding and having somebody that's on our side for the, for the project. So I guess CM at risk um, would be good, but let's wait until we hire the OPM to talk about that. Um, I guess before we go too much further, Martha's taking notes, but we never actually fully finished making her the secretary. <laughs> and if you want a vice chair or a co-chair or something like that, we should do that too. Before okay. We get away from that part of the meeting too far. So I'll nominate anyway. Martha for yeah. <coughs> secretary. Second. All those in favor? So it would be good to have uh, a vice chair or a co-chair or somebody in case I can't be here, take the bus back and forth and for some reason traffic and a meeting starts, we should get be able to get up and get going and not sit around and wait for somebody. Um, so I hope hope we can figure out how to make that happen. Um, in light of being knowledgeable to the process, would you be willing to take that seat? I'll do that. Okay. I nominate John Calla, vice chair. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, Joe. So I, I think to get started, um, I was just really going to show you the directory and the documents that have been organized to date. And then we can think about what is actually needed and what people need um, to understand the project and to understand uh, understand how and what we need to do to draft this up. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get the Frank Thurlow in your house, Eric. No, I don't. That's about as good as it gets. Just about a mile and river. I was telling John, I, I used to live in a house with three real ones in it. It was pretty nice getting up in the morning and looking at the real thing. That's my house. <laughs> That's what I got. That's where they went. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that investigation. Yeah. Guys in the new breed that have close to Really? Collected that. I, I couldn't say who it is. Because <laughs> it's on. Are we on TV? Yes. Yeah. All right. So this this is meant just to be an overview. It's not meant to like read everything. But um, and John, this would be good for you to kind of help understand what is the necessary document. So so for one, we have the the list going around that that people signed. They put this together. Um, last night. So this is a quick overview. This uh, I copied from a couple sources that I found online from other other towns. But uh, you know we're we're walking through it. We've got the administrative duties. I think we need to make a, 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 dis, a schedule. And so between John and I, I think we'll draft something, and then we'll start there. Um, understanding that the, we have. Um, general laws required. The reason we're hiring an OPM is because when you're over 1.5 million of construction value, the state law says you will hire an OPM. And then it, as a, for the chart I showed you, it says here are some recommended tasks. It says you have to hire an OPM. It doesn't say you have to do all these tasks. Um, Qualifications based selection, I went over that. Established criteria that's going to be in the document and the advertisement. We are the selection committee. We'll negotiate fees afterwards. Um, if we fail to negotiate fees, we'll go uh, on to the next person. So we have to select one, and we should select two. And if we interview three people, we should probably just rank them. Um, and maybe for the next meeting, John, understand that we, between you and I, we could have a little better understanding of what the OPM does. 
and specifically what the OPM does when we hire them to get to the designer selection, to get to um, the start of design. We need to understand the construction procurement, but that's really not what we're going to be uh, focused on. The architect will help us with that more. Um, so again, when I was talking about uh, the, the requirements for projects of over 100,000 in terms of um, highway systems and uh, other buildings in terms of flat work, in terms of building construction. Written procedure, we should just come through this first, but. At least three finalists, we could decide to have four. I would hope that we could limit it to at least three, I would think. Um, rank them. We get into the design process where feasibility studies, we've basically done that. Uh, and truthfully, I thought the first phase would be a little bit easier. It took us four years to get through what I would consider to be about 6% of a project phase. So I'm hoping that we can be focused and we can get to the design so that we can get on with the next step of the phase, phase a little bit more quickly. Um, we have a feasibility study. We have uh, space programs. We actually have a layout on the site. Uh, all that can be good to help jumpstart the next person um, or the designer team in terms of understanding what we want. Some of that might even be included in our RFP to help them understand the project. Um, the schematic design, design development, construction documents are all terms during the design phase. Um, we'll ask the design team about that, but we're not going to be managing that as a committee. And then from design, you go into the construction phases. Um, they do their design. There's a certain way to bid the projects. As I said, OPM at risk, he would, he would hire and engage sooner. He would bid out certain contracts like electrical or HVAC, which are over $20,000, have certain stipulations of the way they're bid. Um, it's, all, it's all prescribed. Um, construction monitoring, and then there's a whole bunch of uh, resources. So that's the general overview that I think that I started with. From there, um, schedule, we'll have to develop a schedule somehow of what the steps are. I have a task list that basically will issue. This is the start of the schedule. It's basically the schedule. It's basically a series of tasks. Um, so I'll send this out to everybody. Take a look at it. We'll go over it together, and we'll um, update it or tweak it or add little steps in between. But, but you know, we've got to get through A to get through B to get through C, and it's, we just keep going on down the line. Thank you. Um, so the OPM RFP is this. This was um, drafted on looking at five or six uh, current RFPs that I selected. So it's a combination of what I think is, is pertinent. Um, if you'd like a second RFP to read to get a second review or look at how somebody might have done something slightly different, um, we have them. We have them for Salisbury Library. John will probably provide them as well, but Northampton, Munson, Foxborough, Town Hall. Um, Bellingham Police Station and tried to find ones on West and just finished one on tomorrow too. Right, so the most there. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so this is the, the manual that we we have. Um, so DCAM, uh, Department of Construction and Asset Management. It's M, what's the other M stand for? Management and something. Um, they're the ones that control procedures. They're the ones that are in deep in setting the, the Chapter 149 laws as it relates to like high schools and, and much bigger uh, public projects. Um, and there, then there's also a funding source from Massachusetts. And so with that funding source and with DCAN, 
DCAM is, does what we do, but for the state institutions and the nine uh, colleges and universities in the Commonwealth. Copies of of the manual that you have printed, I thought it was a lot easier if everyone read it um, and had it in hand to mark up and tab as opposed to being digital. Um, I will send out the guide because I think that the chart really helps you, again, understand what the difference between the laws are and what the, the phases and the processes are. You know, we looked at a bunch of, of design guidelines. We hope that the designers that we pick have some of the same things. There's um, checklists, there's um, police facility planning guides, there's the public safety uh, 105 uh, CMR, which talks about um, correctional and lockup facility requirements. Um, I think that got a little confused in terms of the past public debate about what really was required and what was not. Um, because this building is a police station, it's, it's got a critical importance factor of three, which makes it um, have certain structural requirements which are above and beyond. Obviously, if you have a mission critical facility and it's got to stay up in a storm, then they'd like to make sure. And so if you're, um, you know, we were located on the beach and we were located in a flood zone, um, but it's not just a typical or the skinniest structure we have. There's some other additional requirements just because it's a police station. Um, more checklists. The fact that the emergency responses in the police station doesn't change is No, the fact that it's a police station gets a pick. It says police station, fire station, emergency management, blah, 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 okay. Comic -Con. hospital, etc. Has a lot higher fire rating. The uh, building systems are a little bit more robust. Yeah, great work. We're done. Everybody says, why do we have to do that for? Because we do, because it's. And it's just have to be aware of that. Yeah. Um, so we have programs for, yes, town hall. We have programs for the police station. You have a program for the fire station. And so this is just a list of spaces with square footages. These were put together. The pink column on the left is the existing. And then the column on the right was trying to do the, the new and try to show the difference between them. So those, those documents should be made available, I think, to the uh, OPM so they understand the, the scope uh, of the work. Uh, this is just uh, John Ruskin quote. So you know, the, the goal of the Municipal Building Committee and the Public Safety Complex originally and the grand idea was if you combine facilities then you can share facilities and you can build less by combining two and not build redundancy in terms of two lobbies and two front doors. Um, that boat has sailed a little bit. Uh, the act of, of or in the design process once we select a designer we can choose to ask them about a phased facility but um, that's that's not something we're going to debate right now. Um, and I do think we need to um, we need to be careful what we're asking for because we are at the tipping point or point that if we try to minimize and we try to cheapen this too much, that we're going to end up with something that's that's either got a short life or isn't going to meet the needs when we open it. Um, and so we should try to strive for the best. And it's always a task, and we shouldn't get complacent just about understanding that we should just keep pushing forward. And to that end, I did a chart which I'll send out. But in terms of life cycle costs for buildings, typically the cost of construction, ours is 6.5 million, is somewhere between 3 and 5 percent. Ours is 7 percent of a total. Operating costs, um, assumed to be about 80,000 a year is 3% and the big thing to understand is the cost of personnel. The cost of taking it from the 2017 budget for 38 employees, some have various statuses, but the, the um, cost per year is about $2 million in salaries. So what I'm trying to say is that if you take the cost of the building and we change it by 10%, that's $650,000 it would take you 20% savings on your operating costs to 
to save again that six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. It would take you point zero point seven five percent to save that six hundred and fifty thousand dollars in personnel. If we can make a decent building or even a better building that improves the productivity of the people that are going to work in the building, even a seven a point zero point seven percent improvement in productivity will save just as much as adding 10% onto the building cost. So uh, design, coming from the designer, is a very important thing. And the, and the better we can think about this and lay this out, this isn't just the barn that we're trying to, to get constructed here. OK, so I made my pitch. So we have a site survey. We have options which combine the town hall and police station. We have option, we have fire station. We have uh, police station as a standalone addition. We have a, um, drawings that show the town hall is existing and we have town hall even with some, uh, on the left side, some renovations in the basement. So we have a good understanding of, of documentation, which again to show um, prospective OPMs and designers what we're thinking for a project. Not all of that should be let out, but some of it specifically geared towards where we think we're going would be good to help them understand the task at hand. Uh, we have a myriad of, of budgets sliced and diced every single way in terms of getting where we're going. I guess the other big thing to understand is just simply put, you start at the bottom and this is the timeline of we're here today at the word start and we're down here at the bottom of this dark line at the finish of construction and so if we decide to build a fire station and not a police station, technically the cost difference would be zero because we're just starting today. As we move through a project and you get to the end here and you decide to change the handle on the doorknob, the cost difference to get that in the process, to get that ordered and to get that expedited and to get that is extremely large compared to the value of what the change is. So the more you can do up front, the more you can make better decisions um, and the less decisions you can have over the timeline of the project, the better off we'll be. So we, we are setting the guidance and the overall parameters, let the designers do what they do, but we need to make timely decisions as we, as we move along. I can't tell you how important it is. Dragging it out just cost me. Uh, support for my life cycle costs. Um, there are DCAM publishes some fees. They're, they're 2007, so I'm sure some of the designers will cry that they're a little bit old. Um, that's, a few yeah. to, that's another way to say that. Um, And then also it would be helpful to understand that this were these were letters from uh, the police chief on the fire station, uh, letters from uh, building inspector on the town hall, and just a general list of facility issues. Um, it becomes important in the town hall because we have a number for the police station and we have renovations to the town hall and the, the full addition all the renovations in the wish list are compromised a little bit by the budget that we have. And it's not to say that some of them could be made um, later. It's not to say that all of them need to be, but you know, we need to solve accessibility. We need to solve space issues um, in the town hall. And so everyone needs to understand what we're really trying to solve so that when we talk to people, we can understand how they, how they go about solving it. So I think a little betting with Martha and maybe with you, Tracy, will go through this and skinny this up and not try to overwhelm anybody, but there's a plethora of documents, I think, that have been produced or created, that, and some of it's going to need to be attached and made public for the process that we're going to undertake. Okay, I'm done talking. Does anybody have any other items? Um, I guess until we have sort of a task list that's been vetted once and that we publish um, in terms of the greater schedule Tracy and I had previously. I guess I'll rehash this. This said this was last January. Um, this was a day by day, week by week blow of how to get from 
from where we are right today to get through the design or selection process. So all the and this was like the first first pass draft. Um, there's a couple more that get to. But it was a way to just say, okay, if we start today and we march along the schedule, so between the task list and setting dates, that's something that we need to do. Right? Like that in the Microsoft project. Yep. Well, that would be excellent. Because I have a, been previously showing this and showing other schedules in Excel. And um, if you could put it in the project, that would make it a little bit more, I guess, realistic. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So task number one for the committee is really to understand that the, the schedule. I think Tracy, you need to help to figure out an end date when we'd like to start design, and we can discuss that at the next meeting. We'll be prepared to discuss that. Um, so one is the schedule. We should pick an end date, set a party, and, and figure out how we're going to get there. Um, we need to start with the schedule. Everyone needs to get a copy of the draft. Everyone needs to start to read this and understand this. And then everyone needs to start to read and understand the copy of the of the, the draft. The RFP. And um, if anybody, any entity asks you for this, I wouldn't give it to anybody. This shouldn't be published until we are done with it, until we decide to publish it. So don't be giving it out. If an OPM or a designer or a contractor calls you, do take their name, do take their phone number, <coughs> let's put it on a list. I already have a list. I'll share that list at the appropriate time. And, and we can have a little discussion if we know people or, or uh, what is, as we get into the, the process. So you got that schedule? John and I are going to work on it. Two is doing your homework. Three is distributing some documents. Um, and then the second part of the next meeting should be a discussion. Um, Otto and Chief, Deputy Chief, you know, and Tracy for the town hall should speak about what this means and what we're going to do and what, what needs to be done, not on a, a room by room basis, but what the effort would mean for for the building that we're, we're trying to get. Okay. Um, I would hope that we could all do something and stick with this and at the end of the day we're all very proud of what we build and, and it's not, we're not defeated and we're not compromised but we're proud and excited and, and happy to say that we, we took part in the whole process to make this happen and that there's real value on multiple levels for this building. Not only does it function and serve its purpose, it operates efficiently. Um, residents are pleased and proud to say that that's their town hall, that that's their police station, and visitors also drive by and take notice. Um, I don't know if we have the money for it, but it would be nice to see if there's a grant for you know solar panels. If there's a way to somehow figure out, if maybe we could do geothermal. We could get this thing off the grid, and we could do something even better for our town. Great. Um, that would all be great. Uh, I, not sure what the building should look like. I don't know if it should be brick. I don't know if it should be clapper. I don't know if it should be shingled. But the building should have some civic presence, and the building should should be in the essence of Newbury. I'm not looking or would push for or truthfully my personal opinions and it shouldn't be some newfangled new style of class architecture. It should represent the essence of the brain. And durability. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So when do you want to meet next? <sighs> um well, what a good frequency doing <clears throat> Are we ready to meet weekly or uh, bi-weekly? Let's... <coughs> and also a time that works for people like you and John and the All right, town, so all, a uh, town staff. Yeah. That's a good discussion. If the, morning, if the morning works for you folks, that's fine for me. Yeah, I'm willing to get up and meet at 6 a.m. if that facilitates meeting. Um, 
I do like seven o'clock meetings. The meeting ends at nine. I can get on a nine o'clock bus, be at, be at work at 10. I can work late and come home. Um, getting here at six is a little more difficult because I gotta get on a four o'clock bus. Um, I can do that, I'm willing to do that. Um, I may have some issues in terms of projects or schedules. Um, Wednesdays afternoons don't work for me anymore. And Thursday mornings don't work for me anymore, for me. So why don't we take two weeks, we'll have the next meeting on a Tuesday before the Board of Selectmen's meeting again. Is that right? Yes. And we'll shoot for that. And what we'll do is Martha will send out an email with the list so everybody has everybody's contact information. And part of that will put your preferred meeting times. Maybe Martha and I will suggest three times and people can say we'll, we'll pick the best, which works for the most. I know that I'll be away for work during that. <clears throat> Um, and with that email, we'll also have a recap of notes and the hot list of what we plan to accomplish in the next meeting so that we can be productive. And th this is heavy listing. This is no more just everyone nodding their head and looking at something and saying, yes, this is a real document, real editing, and it's going to go out to the public, and when it gets out in the public realm, it better be solid or it's going to be a pain in the ass to line and we'll be into 10 times more work. We thought the last phase was tough. This, people going to the Attorney General and crying foul will be even tougher. Mm -hmm. um, Just to clarify, this committee will, will go through the process, make a recommendation, but the Board of Selectors will actually Ultimately, make the selection yeah. session, and then who will be responsible for negotiating the fee? Probably, probably the cases. Yeah. Is that done just by you, or is that done with you and somebody else? Or just like right. So one of the things I think we need to set up, and we'll set up with the OPM, is a set of um, milestones during the design phases for which we um, would request and then publish and lock into a series of approvals during the whole design phase by the board of select. Mm -hmm. Exactly what that is, but there will be checks and balances. I think that's, that is a good point, that we will make a recommendation, we'll do our scorecard, and it will be clear who we picked, and then we will still make a recommendation back to the board of select to, to finalize it. Some of those real meetings that you're processing the intrinsic information on choosing the OPM, the Board of Selectmen should be also looking at tapes. So they see how you ground into some of the files. Yes, so when we, it is my expectation that when we receive proposals, that, that we can include more people in the understanding of that process. Where are the voting organized committee but there still needs to be and certainly when we have interviews I think all the selectmen need to be here I think other people from the chairs and committees and boards need to be here and um, the public needs to be here they they won't be engaging the panel but we will the interviewers for these. But this, this is the buy-in period. Everybody that has a stake in this should be at the interviews to hear what's going on. Um, I think we should probably adjourn to something else pressing because we have to set up for a second. Yep. I think that's good. So I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second it. Mm -hmm. All of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All of us. Favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.